Good afternoon. We're convening the Senate Committee on Transportation and Culture and the Arts here in Conference Room 224, State Capitol, on our 3 p.m. agenda. We do have a number of measures up for hearing this afternoon, so um, we'd ask everyone to make sure you have your written testimony uh, filed so that's public and access accessible to everybody. And if you have submitted written testimony and you're here to testify in person or on Zoom, we'd ask you to uh, try and keep your uh, testimony concise, as we do have what you've written, um, so we can make sure we can get to everybody's testimony in time. Uh, and that said, we do have a two-minute time limit uh, for testimony, and there will be an opportunity to have the committee ask questions thereafter uh, in case you run out of time. Um, so that said, let's move into our hearing. Up first today is Senate Bill 1411 relating to the Drug and Alcohol Toxicology Testing Laboratory, which makes an appropriation to the Department of Transportation uh, for uh, as a grant to the City and County of Honolulu to expend funds from the Drug and Alcohol Toxicology Testing Lab Special Fund uh, and amends references to the State Drug and Alcohol Toxicology Testing Lab Special Fund. And testifying first on SB 1411 is uh, the Department of Health. Uh, in, oh, with us online? No. Um, in support? Department of Transportation. Dr. Lee, Vice Chair Kinoy, members, please stand to support. Thank you very much. Up next is County of Hawaii Police Department. Aloha, Thank Chair you. Lee and committee members. My name is Tori Keldner. Uh, I'm the program manager of Sorry about that. I'm the program manager of traffic services here at the Hawaii Police Department. And I'm here today representing the department uh, on to support Senate, the passing of Senate Bill uh, 1411. And um, we stand by the written testimony we have. And I wanted to stress to you uh, some of the events that led us to where we're at in, in this. Um, over the past three years, we've had a great concern for the department in managing the testing of blood samples collected during impaired driving cases. In uh, 2020, clinical labs informed our department and other departments that they would no longer conduct tests on blood samples for alcohol concentrations. And this left our, our department without a means to conduct testing since state law requires that the testing be conducted in a certified lab within inside the state of Hawaii. Fortunately, a city and county of Honolulu Emergency Services Lab came forward and agreed to perform the testing temporarily as we tried to find a, a solution. It only took a few months and it became apparent that the city and county of Honolulu lab had become overwhelmed and the amount of work that was being submitted uh, and that with the amount of work been, that had been submitted and they determined that they would uh, too no longer perform the test for us. At that point, the Hawaii uh, Department of Transportation agreed to temporarily fund a position dedicated to testing the blood samples um, at the city and county lab and they began the testing again. Um, we're extremely appreciative for the help offered by DOT and the City of County Lab. However, temporary fixes to a legally required testing process have continued to be a great concern for the Hawaii Police Department. Senate Bill 1411 will assure a long-term remedy for the testing. It's for those reasons we urge you, the committee, to approve this legislation. Thank you for allowing the Hawaii Police Department to provide comments, and I greatly appreciate, appreciate it if you pass Senate Bill 1411. Thank you. Thank you. Up next on 1411 is Mothers Against Drunk Driving. Thank you. Mother, members of Mothers Against Drunk Driving and Hawaii strong stand in strong support of the measure. Thank you. That's all the testimony we have. Is there anyone else here wishing to testify? Oh, please, come forward. My name is Richard Saiki. I represent the Hawaii Department of Health. Oh, okay. apologies. I please. fully support this. Uh, I mean, that's uh, measure. Okay, thank um, you. I, I'd like to note though that the department respectfully asks that um, it be removed as the... Um, You're on 1411. Yeah, yeah ex, ex, uh, expediting agency in this bill. Okay, because we will we'll no longer be involved in drug and alcohol uh, Toxicological testing. So noted. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. All right. Anyone else wishing to testify on this measure? If not, are there any questions? All right. If not, thank you, everybody. Let's move on to the next measure. Oh, on Zoom. Uh, we have Department of Health on Zoom as well. 
Yes, hi, uh, I'm Ed Desmond, and uh, yeah, Richard Saiki has spoken for us, uh, so thank you very much. Oh, thank you. Okay. Uh, if there's nothing else in 1411, let's move on to the next measure, Senate Bill 1401, relating to the electric bicycle and electric moped rebate program. Up uh, first on 1401 is Department of Transportation. Chair, sure. 50 cents is support. Thank you. Department of Budget and Finance. Good comments. Hawaii State Energy Office. Ah, thank you. Uh, and we have Bike Share Hawaii. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Aloha, Council. Uh, yes, committee members. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Wrong hat on. Um, yes. Right. You didn't call us house members, so it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Give me time. Some Give of us are former colleagues. I know. That, <laughs> that's where my mind went, so apologies again. Um, I stand in support of this with. Um, uh, an additional request that for um, consider uh, other options such as bike share for um, folks that don't have access to a secure and safe place to park a bike once they buy it. Uh, again, we support this. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> uh, is there anyone else wishing to testify on this measure this afternoon? If not, are there any questions? All right, if not, thank you. Let's move on to Senate Bill 929. Uh, related to DOT, uh, which requires DOT to implement recommendations by the Office of the Auditor. And testifying first is Department of Transportation. Thank you. That's all the testimony we have in this measure. Is there anyone else here wishing to testify? If not, are there any questions? All right, if not, thank you. Let's move on to Senate Bill 1087, relating to transportation, uh, which renames the State Highway Safety Council and the men's its duties and composition. And testifying first is um, Climate Change Adaptation Commission in support, Lupono Initiative. Good afternoon, Chair Lee, Vice Chair Inouye, members of the committee, Micah Munikata on behalf of the Lupono Initiative. We wanna stand on our written testimony and support, um, just with a brief comment, you know, this group can provide thoughtful evidence-based conversations to really support the department as it looks to balance a lot of the community needs across Hawaii. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Next, we have Big Chair Hawaii in support. I stand on uh, what this one mentioned. Thank you. Also have um, testimony from two individuals. Oh, excuse me, actually, um, CJ Johnson, I believe, online. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Chair and Committee. I stand on my testimony in support of this bill. Thank you. Thank you. And finally, from uh, Will Karen in support. That's all the testimony we have in this measure. Is there anyone else here wishing to testify? If not, are there any questions? Okay, if not, thank you. Let's move on to the next measure, Senate Bill 1086, um, relating to transportation, uh, which similarly amends the composition and duties of the State Highway Safety Council. Uh, testifying first is the Department of Transportation. Sure, uh, stand on the comments. Thank you. This is Ulupono Initiative. Sure, we'll stand on our testimony and support. Thank you. And uh, that's all the submitted testimony we have. Is there anyone else wishing to testify on this measure? All right, if not, are there any questions? If not, thank you. Let's move on to Senate Bill 1410 relating to truck beds, which repeals exemptions from the prohibition on operating a pickup truck with passengers seated in the bed uh, under certain circumstances. And testifying first on 1410 is Department of Transportation. Thank you. And that's all the testimony we have in this measure. Is there anyone else here wishing to testify on 1410? If not, are there any questions? If not, um, thank you. Let's move on to Senate Bill 1506 uh, relating to transportation, which establishes a Safe Routes for People program and funding. Uh, testifying first on 1506 is the Department of Transportation. Thank you. Next is Department of Health. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Senator. 
Vice Chair and Chair. Um, I'm Lola Irvin, representing um, Director Fink for the Department of Health. And the Department of Health does defer to the Department of Transportation on the fiscal implications and, of course, as the lead agency. Um, we do want to note that um, while we offer comments that um, the intent of um, this measure and the intent of this task force that would be um, formed is, in, is consistent with what the Centers for Disease Control um, represents as um, one of the um, eight key strategies to promote physical activity. And I'm sorry, I realize I'm masking my voice, okay? Um, and also that in terms of um, the Department of Health's um, Healthy Hawaii Strategic Plan 2030, it does um, meet the objectives there. And then the Department of Education, Department of Health work on the wellness guidelines, and it is consistent with the guidelines as well to improve the fiscal activity opportunities by changing the environment for our youth as well as our families. So thank you for the opportunity to provide testimony. Thank you. Up next is the State uh, Council on Developmental Disabilities. Thank you. Uh, Department of Budget and Finance. We have comments. Hawaii Climate Change Mitigation and Adaptation Commission in support. Honolulu Police Department. The HPD stands on our written testimony and support. Thank you. Um, Council Member, oh, I apologize, taking this out of order. Uh, Council Member Radiant Cordero in support. Uh, Ulupono Initiative. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Chair, Vice Chair, members of the committee. Thank you, Chair, for, for hearing this measure. Um, just real brief comments. Uh, we are in strong support of this bill. We believe additional resources from the state can help us to meet some of our collective goals, um, especially around improving congestion, climate goals, and around the cost of living. Um, so we really appreciate this committee uh, taking up this measure and considering active transportation's future. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Up next is Association of Native Hawaiian Physicians in support. Huyo Ho'ohonua in support. Kauai Path in support. Get Fit Kauai in support. Hawaii Bicycling League in support. Um, Make sure Hawaii. Uh, we respectfully stand on written testimony in support. Thank you. AARP Hawaii. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Oh, you're so fast. I thought you would be a flip on the agenda. All I'm, efficient. <laughs> I'm Audrey Suganakagawa. I'm the advocacy director for ARP Hawaii. And for obvious reasons, ARP stands in strong support of this. We know that our kapuna are probably the most um, high, most at risk uh, for pedestrian injuries and, and, and mortalities. And so we always support initiatives that will provide safe road, routes, safe roads for not only for our kapuna, but for our cake and all the pedestrians. So thank you very much for this opportunity to support this measure. And thank you for all that you do to keep our community safe. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you for being here. Appreciate it. Up next is Hawaii Children's Action Network and support. Um, Martin Berger, in, uh, attorney, in support. White Appleseed Center for Law and Economic Justice, in support. Uh, Jessica Thompson, good afternoon. Uh, good afternoon, thank you so much, Honorable Chair and Vice Chair. Um, I stand on my written testimony, thank you. Thank you. Um, next is Cameron Rogers, in support. C.J. Johnson. Chair and Council, I stand in support of my strong stand on my strong support. I did want to just call out, um, I since this concerns um, highway safety special funds, that I, I made a suggested amendment um, to the current uh, State Highway Safe Routes to School Special Fund HRS 291C3. That um, just because it's an older statute, it has some legacy language in it, and and I recommended some language changes that remove some references to safety loo, which is outdated funding, clarify some of the responsibilities of the safe routes coordinator and clarify the administration of and permitted uses of the existing special fund. Uh, other than that, just standing in strong support. Thank you so much for listening. Appreciate it. Thank you. We have additional support from about another 10 or so individuals uh, who've submitted written testimony. Is there anyone else here with us in the room or on Zoom wishing to testify in this measure? If not, are there any questions? Yeah, I have a question. Well, Vice Chair. Yes, thank you. Um, Ed, regarding, um, regarding, let's see, we're looking at Section 5, Part 2, regarding the use of the highway funds for protected walkways and bikeways. 
can I bring up an addition if possible that the group would look at infrastructure such as, and it brings to mind um, in one of my recent former district uh, like Waimea uh, and part of the district on the Hamakua coast um, where, um, and I would say to add infrastructure such as a bus stop or a building to house the students. Um, particularly in Waimea when it rains in the morning and there's and you see the kids all walking mm -hmm. down to school. Um, and you know, at the bus stop that, or they're waiting for the bus stop, there's no shelter. Mm -hmm. And I was just wondering if you can work with the group and, and find out through the counties what their programs are, where the infrastructure is lacking in certain areas. <clears throat> Would love to. And so to answer your question, the, the federal funds are not restricted. Um, so it could be used for those purposes. But you bring up a good point. I mean, once we open this up like this, because we've been working with the counties in different areas, mm -hmm. to ensure that we worked on their system as well. Once we open this up, there is no end to it. Oh, really. Absolutely, so, I can imagine. Yeah, and it's, that's why in my, in my testimony, I had recommended, because right now, policies are not the restriction right now. It's funding. So if there was a if there was an infusion of funding that was dedicated, especially state funding, that was dedicated specifically to bike and ped, and I threw in a, a number that is not just a swag, it was a number that I know I can justify. If I put if we put in fifty million dollars to make sure we could move forward mm -hmm. on improvements in different communities, we could affect we could affect a significant number of communities with speed management devices, um, more safety devices in mm -hmm. different areas that are already built out. Plus, we could add in more bicycle and pedestrian facilities and. Charlie and I were talking about that as a potential for something like this. Yeah, and in that area um, on Mud Lane, going down to um, the, the schools from Mud Lane, the, the, the kids there in Waimea, they walk and they bike. And, but there's periods of time uh, when uh, the weather is real bad, uh, but that the county is good about their county system, um, transportation, um, but then they can stop and pick up you know, those in certain areas. But that entire region, I don't see, aside from, I think the coverage at the entrance at Mud Lane uh, <clears throat> and Lakeland, uh, but beyond that and going into town, I don't see the infrastructure there for uh, to protect mm. anyone. Uh, the Kupuna mm. who's walking, you know, going down to um, whatever they need to, wherever they go. Um, yeah, and it's not, not, sadly, not unlike many of the communities that we have. Yeah. Um, projects are built out and they stop in different areas. So you have you have gaps in the system, like you just pointed out. There. Appreciate it. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Ed. Thank you, Chair. Uh, two questions for you, um, Director Sniffin. Um, in the current, you said 50 million. So is that what you're proposing for Safe Routes to School this coming session? So not necessarily Safe Routes to School, but for this bill itself. If we have a committee like this that could help guide uh, the expenditure or the prioritization, of, of, a, of a dedicated fund specifically for this. And this is, I'm just looking at this session. Uh, we could get a whole bunch done very, very quickly. I mean, we've shown whether it's a state system or a county system, we can, within three to six weeks, we can get a lot of improvements in the ground um, to affect communities very quickly. Right. So this is a number that I know we can justify putting out very quickly. If we're looking at safety improvements um, and just and imp operation improvements right away, but also looking at long, longer term improvements, adding in um, protected bike lanes or sidewalks and whatnot. And then as a follow up to that, how many safe routes to school coordinators does DOT have? We have one. And that handles the entire state? Yes. Got it. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Senator Kiwakolode. Thank you. Thank you, Director. How does this contemplate the, oh, I don't know if this is other counties, but how does this contemplate the sidewalk issue with the county for? you know, that, that snippet in time easement sidewalks that are disintegrating across the island like Malunu or William Henry Road in Kanyahe? So from my perspective, a, a, fund, a, a funding portion like this would allow us to address a whole bunch of issues across the, across the board. When we hear issues, and, and we've been putting out our, our safety um, survey to the public for a little while now, about 80% of them come back are for county roads. And, and not because the counties are doing a bad job. It's just that they have more roads than us. I mean, they have three times the roads that the state does. 
So just understanding that when Chair V and I were talking, I mean, the, the needs are so big across the state and the counties, it'd be really good to have a, a piece of funding like this that we could address systems versus just state or county levels. Okay, so you're saying that there's a possibility. Absolutely. Yeah, because this, Absolutely. if you live on Waikoloa Road or on Malonia, this is gonna ring hollow if we don't, if we yeah. put in a lane and then it doesn't address the potholes in the sidewalk. That Absolutely. we just haven't been able to work out to date, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, Chair. Sure. Further questions? Uh, no, just real quick on this, um, we talked about this briefly, but you know, similarly in the past, we've had the Safe Routes to Schools, like specific to schools, right? Um, special fund and, and kind of similar program where projects get proposed and evaluated and funded. If we were to fold that together into this, because it's sort of similar, um, or even use the special fund that exists for that and dump this money into there and just brought in the, the authorized uses in the special fund, is that? I would support it. And the only thing I would caution is with, with the federal rules that come in for the safe school <coughs> funding that we get, there are strings attached to it. So there's portions that we can use for programs, portions we can use for seed money, portions that we can use for infrastructure. That's all mm -hmm. I would yeah. mm -hmm. Would that necessarily limit if we put all this other separate money in without those strings? No, no. So uh, what I would do is make sure that we fund things with federal only in different areas so that we wouldn't uh, commingle the money or, or taint any of the money with federal federalness. But that wouldn't need any specific no. implications in the bill? No. Okay. Okay, thank you. Thank you. And then, um, like with uh, CJ Johnson and Cristolan, you also had hey, mentioned yes. across the schools. Yeah, I, I wanted to clarify uh, the previous comment regarding the, the one asked about the Safe Routes Coordinator. And the, the, there's only a statutory Safe Routes Coordinator. I think many states have a best practice full-time Safe Routes Coordinator whose job is to provide TA and interact and, and develop county plans and work with nonprofits. As, as I understand it, the the, de the coordinator at the, at the HDOT is not a full-time Safe Routes Coordinator and is only the, like the coordinator for statutory purposes. Okay, if, if we were to fold in the Safe Routes Program uh, oh, still there? Sorry, if we were to fold in the Safe Routes program into this so that we have what's basically a bigger pot of funds that can address not only schools, but connectivity around schools and, and for everything else, do you see that as an issue? I think that would be great. And I think and the, the proposed language that we suggested for amending the existing Safe Routes to School um, HRS addresses the need for a, a kind of a statewide coordinator. That's a dedicated full-time one that could be a, that could support this work. Okay, thank you. Thank you. All right, any other questions? If not, let's move on to the next measure. Thank you, everybody. <clears throat> Up next is SB 1173 relating to vehicles, which prohibits a uh, person uh, intentionally discharging smoke, soot, or other emissions onto another uh, person and establishes penalties. And testifying first on 1173 is Hawaii Transportation Association. Lewis? Hello, Chair Lee. Uh, I'm not sure if you can see or hear me. Oh, we, we, we see you behind a cloud of black soot. <laughs> uh, if you're, I, I'm just joking. Um, is your video is your video working? I guess not. Uh, this is not. Okay. Well, why, why don't you uh, go ahead and we'll we'll figure out the IT issues. Yeah, we can hear you. <clears throat> My smartphone system wasn't connecting, so I had to jerry rig this thing. <laughs> no worries. Okay, well, yeah, we we'll oppose the bill. Uh, first, we can't imagine any commercial driver intentionally discharging soap or smoke upon any personal vehicle. And you know, with our vertical exhaust stacks, even if you wanted to aim at somebody, uh, you couldn't with the, with the vertical stacks. And enforcement is difficult. Anybody can claim that soap or smoke was discharged at them. But uh, how to prove it's intentional, don't know. Lots of uh, emission technologies have, have come along since ooh, 20 years ago. And a lot of the actual soot uh, is, is trapped by these diesel particulate filters and burned off. So, but, but gases can still be emanated no matter how clean the diesel particulates are trapped. And the other scenario I just popped into my mind a little earlier was in Waikiki when you have the lights turning and the buses start moving, the exhaust gases are emitted and they're emitted down towards the road. Then whatever stuff is on the road, dust, sand, pebbles, that, that's kicked up. 
So it's not something that uh, is intentional. Thank you. Thank you. Um, up next on 1173 is Joel Rivera in opposition. That's all the written testimony we have. Is there anyone else here wishing to testify in this measure? Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Senate Committee. Yes, um, for the record, Todd Boulanger, Executive Director of uh, Bike Share Hawaii. I'd like to testify in uh, support of this. And I believe the intent of this bill is really focused on the, um, not the commercial vehicles as such, uh, as the testimony is previously given, but privately owned vehicles and what is typically called rolling coal. Um, this is where a, additional um, emission defeat devices have been added and it often impacts pedestrians and cyclists and other uh, sidewalk users where when the vehicle purposely accelerates, the defeat device is engaged and a big, um, basically a big, it's almost like a locomotive going by. It's happened to me, it's happened to um, many of our members. Um, and it typically, you see it on uh, higher speed arterials, typically state roads like um, going out towards Kahala, maybe even Nimitz. Um, a lot of drivers, it's almost a psychological tool to suppress other road users. It's, it's um, as they've tracked it on the continent. So um, this is an additional device. It's, it's made to emit um, rolling smoke and it's very hard to breathe. I don't know if you've been by a vehicle that's uh, emissions are faulty on, especially when they're on purpose, especially a diesel vehicle. Um, and uh, it's very hard to breathe and it's poisonous. So uh, I support this bill and thank you. Thank you. Uh, is there anyone else here wishing to testify on this measure this afternoon? <clears throat> All right, if not, are there any questions? All right, if not, thank you everybody. Let's move on to the <clears throat> next measure, SB 1403, relating to motor carrier vehicle inspections, which allows the Director of Transportation to upgrade the motor carrier vehicle inspections, uh, authorizing changes to the program to be implemented by admin rules. And testifying first on 1403 is Department of Transportation. Thank you, Chair. We dropped the bill, um, but we don't need it now. <laughs> so I think for it to be deferred. Thank you. Thank you. 1403. Yeah, I have ours as well. <laughs> 1403. Okay. Up next is um, Hawaii Transportation okay. Association. Mr. Sakakita. Uh, by Chair and Hawaii and committee members. Well, we concur with uh, Director Smithen's testimony. Thank you very much. Uh, that's all the testimony we have on SB 1403. Is there anyone else here wishing to testify? Um, yes. No, 1430? Yes, 14. No, not 1430. Wait, ask him. We're on uh, Senate Bill 1403. Okay. Oh, no, not 14, you're at 1430. Are you looking to testify on another measure? Uh, safety checks. Okay, okay. Um, that's coming up. So hold on just a, just a minute and we'll finish this measure and, and uh, come back to you. <clears throat> Thank you. Um, anyone else on 1403? All right, if not, any questions? If not, all right, thank you. Let's move on to Senate Bill 493 relating to motor vehicle inspections, which provides that no new motor, no new vehicle needs a safety inspection until five years after the date it was sold and moving to a two-year motor vehicle safety check for vehicles 10 years of age or newer uh, under certain circumstances. And testifying first on SB 493 is the Department of Transportation. Okay, uh, the DOT stands in opposition. Thank you. Up next we have a uh, testimony from three individuals uh, who submitted written testimony. Is there anyone else wishing to testi testify on this measure this afternoon? All right, if not, are there questions? Question. Oh, Vice Chair. Um, with regards to the five year, um, I guess, hold once you do an inspection, uh, this is only on, well, this measure covers only new vehicles, my understanding. So, what happens with, uh, how do we know in between those times that there is an insurance covered for a certain period? Mm, that's the difficulty. And for, for me, just looking at the numbers that we have, 
um, for in, any inspection period, uh, vehicles from two years on um, average about 15% failure rate. So that inspection period just gives us that time frame to look at correcting potential either um, faulty equipment or modified equipment um, in any vehicles. It also allows that check on, on the required documentation for, for those vehicles. Oh, okay. But you know, we've had bills over the years and I think there was a lot of support for extending it to two years, um, which I think probably would, would be a benefit. But uh, okay, it's just a question because in the event, um, but I know though, if there is a purchase of a vehicle, then the, the financial institution requires, I think if you have a loan, that an insurance will be covered, right? I think, um, but if someone pays cars with cash, um, you know, then uh, there's really no, um, I would think, you know, if there's any coverages yeah. of oversight. Well, so I think there's really good reasons to look at consideration or considering extending the periods between inspections. But just based on the data that we have, very difficult for us to recommend that um, there wouldn't be any issues or safety issues that would come up. But that's interesting too for discussional purposes for five years. Are you aware of any other state that has five years? <laughs> there's some or states that don't even have inspections. Oh, that's programs. right. That's true. Yeah. There's many in the country. Yeah. Okay. All right. It so, for whatever reason, I, I can't see your testimony uh, in the packet. Oh, yeah, so, yeah. Well, so if you can comment, you know, while we're asking the question, yeah. the, the five-year um, portion of the bill, I understand. But then it also proposes the two-year for vehicles 10 years of age or younger. What, what's your specific issue with that? Proposal? In general, specific issue, we still get 15% failure rate throughout the years. It's a difficulty. So, I mean, just from my perspective, not only do we have faulty equipment that come through, um, I mean, there's a bill going through right now that, that asks for, to ensure that we're, that the lights are, are set correctly in the vehicles. Um, there's too many things that I see, just based on the data, that could be faulty in the, in the equipment or modified um, and the like. Right now, I just have big issues with extremely dark tint <laughs> because because that's, that doesn't look like it's being caught on an inspection piece, and we're talking to the inspectors about that right now. But those are all the things that we see annually every year. Bummer. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Any further questions? Oh. Um, as a follow-up to <clears throat> some of the line of questioning, isn't it required by state law to have an insurance? Yes. Um, and then um, follow-up to um, Senator from Kanyohe. Um, would DOT be open? Um, I know in the bill it proposes five years. Um, would you be open to like three or four years rather than five years? I, I understand your overall concern on VMT and funding and whatnot. It, it's just difficult. It'd be just based on the numbers, if we saw that there was a lower incidence of fault of, of of failures on the inspections in the first five years, yeah, yeah. then I could see it. What what would be that number though? Well, I don't even see a reduction. I just see, on average, it's about 15% throughout. So it's difficult for me to say what that breakpoint sure, would be. Sure, sure. Understood. Okay. Thank you, Director. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Other questions? <clears throat> Good for discussion on purposes, though. All right. If not, thank you, everybody. Let's move on to Senate Bill 1430, relating to motor vehicles, which repeals motor vehicle safety inspection requirements for certain motor vehicles. And testifying first is the Department of Transportation. Thank you. Up next, we have uh, Leeward Auto Repair in opposition, Hawaii Transportation Association. Thank you, Chair. We uh, we were concerned about the bill. I mean, at some point, the older vehicles uh, will have problems developing. So, um, much like the prescription, we don't know what the age threshold should be. But uh, the way stations can uh, weigh in on that. And uh, language from the, within the bill requiring an inspection that is, quote, is in such unsafe condition as to constitute a minute to the public was not equipped and required and cannot reasonably be restored to a safe condition is required to be spark. Those vehicles should be inspected. 
Uh, but if there's a blanket exemption, then I don't know how that's going to be accomplished. Thank you. Thank you very much. Can we turn up the audio? Yeah, I think I think that's his one. Yeah, um, yes. Well, we can come back. We can come back to any question and answer. The volume. Um, real quick, it can we just uh, crank the volume up a little bit here for the online folks? I'll see what I can do. Thank you. Uh, up next is JB Entertainment Corporation in support. Wahoo Motorsports Association in support. Uh, Spencer Barros um, in support. Uh, we do have a number of, again, we have about three pages or so of individuals testifying, almost all in support, a handful in opposition, one with comments. Um, <clears throat> is anybody in the room here here to testify on this measure today? All right, in person. Okay, why don't we go through the room first and then we'll go to the folks online. So please, uh, come on up. Good afternoon. Hello, and if you could state your name. And... Yeah, my name is Ryan Nicholas Luther from the public. Uh, I just wanted to just show my strong support uh, with this bill worth repealing the safety inspections. Uh, I wrote a couple notes down here. So just standing by my written testimony too as well. Uh, I put that for you all. So for me, it's as a public, the traffic and police officers have a little bit more important deal than looking at a safety sticker. You can look at registrations. Uh, they can see the malfunction of a light or an actual blinker or whatnot. So when I go ahead and look at being driving in DOT, I see a lot more need for the commercial side and us not having way stations. I feel like this is a much greater need than looking at public vehicles. So I would, you know, advocate for, for proper maintenance and care for these commercial vehicles, for safety checks to continue and implement with these. Uh, tires, trailers are falling apart. I mean, that's all I see when I'm driving on the highways, uh, specifically even where they're driving on the highways and speeds. Um, you know, for a viable solution with these safety checks, I know it's money too as well that we'll be losing funds. Uh, for me, there's coming from the mainland decades ago, there was a, a fix-it ticket. So an officer seen a vehicle that was broken down, you give them a ticket, you have a certain amount of time to go ahead and take care of that. And then once that was implemented and completed, you go ahead and send that in, you get it you know, certified by someone or cadets used to sign them off that it was fixed. Uh, dark light, what I heard here, you know, uh, tents, things like this sort. And then you, when that is, go ahead and, in that time frame, there's no cost that's incurred. But if that isn't done and implemented in the, amount of time allotted, whatever that is, you know, developed 30 days or whatnot, then that gets implemented onto your registration. And when you go ahead and try to go ahead and get your registration done, you have to show proof of that fix being done. For me, it's just, you know, police officers and traffic officers have a lot more to do than looking at a tiny sticker. And a lot of them are, are showing bid numbers as well. So you're pulling someone over for something that might just be a fake safety sticker when you have registrations and registration are linked to your safety inspection anyways. So really you're, you know, you're losing a lot of time and, and money for officers pulling people over when they can just go ahead and give that safety ticket or a fix it ticket to someone seeing that issue and just go ahead and get it corrected. So I just want to say that I have a strong support of repealing safety inspections and I appreciate your time. Thank you very much. Next. <clears throat> Again, for the record, Todd Boulanger, um, Mike Sher White. I wish to have um, verbal testimony in uh, opposition of this. Um, cyclists really depend on motor vehicles to have well-adjusted headlights, which really the um, current inspection system doesn't really um, address, at least when I've had our motor vehicles inspected. I, I'm old enough to remember when you had to go into an inspection station and have your headlights checked. And um, I think the number of failures in the submitted testimony may be missing really the problems that m new vehicles have regarding um, uh, headlights that are too bright, poorly adjusted, um, license plates that have uh, smoke smoke covers. Um, and additionally for pedestrians and cyclists, we really need a system that makes sure that motor vehicle drivers have uh, insurance in case of a, a collision or crash. Um, we re really rely on the system. Um, if if uh, this bill does go through to law, we would like to have some data as to the number of people that might not have insurance, choose insurance if the uh, inspection periods are much longer. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Uh, 
Um, anyone else in the room wishing to testify on this measure this afternoon? All right, if not, let's go online. Mr. Lyons, thank you for your patience. Uh, thank you, Chair Lee. I appreciate your time. Um, very briefly, I'll try to talk fast, but I'm open for questions. First of all, I'm a retired police officer, Sergeant, here in Honolulu, and I am in support of doing away with safety checks. I, in all the accidents I've been to, nobody has ever said, was this a safety issue? And we have 34, over 34 states in the nation that do not require any kind of uh, safety check or safety inspection. The other thing is, you know, when you go, I'll give you an example from Kahalu to Pearl City, I only found one station to give a safety check for a motorcycle. If they have a mechanic available, but they haven't been able to keep a mechanic because they, they don't last. The other thing is you look at Honolulu uh, Motorsports, Hawaii Motorsports, they only do two in the morning and two in the evening. The other thing, when you do a safety check, they check if the lights are working, but they don't check where they're pointing. So one could be pointing at the ground, one could be pointing at the stars. The main thing is the light is on. And so it becomes redundant. The other thing, I had the experience of having to take my vehicle all the way to Honolulu, even light, to get a safety check. And it's ridiculous. It cost me $100 on a day's pay. And I lost money. And then they nearly doubled the cost of the inspection. And I paid the, nothing was wrong. Everything was up to date and right. So this is an opportunity for a lot of problems. And I'm sorry. Yeah. And if you have uh, something wrong with your car, the next day, things could go wrong. So there's no longevity in the inspection, except only for that day. I guess you do uh, summarize, please. Um, please support this bill in getting rid of it. Uh, it's, it's redundant and it's troublesome. People have a hard time getting in to get a safety check. I'm tired of waiting in a line for four hours just to get a 10 minute safety check. But the computer requires they spend an hour on it. It's not happening. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Lyons. Thank you. All right. Are there others um, online wishing to testify on this measure? If not, <clears throat> all right. Thank you, everybody. Um, are there any questions? Deal with me, please. <clears throat> Director, can you address the uh, points made by the previous testifier about, I, I'm unfamiliar with the way station issue and why or whether, you know, how we deal with that, with that issue and then also the fix it ticket <clears throat> approach. So for, I was a little confused with the, with the comments, but. Um, I, from what I heard and then, I, you know, if, if, if we continue to be confused, then I can ask the gentleman to come up and elaborate. But it seems to me like the allusion, they were, he was alluding toward the, the fact that commercial vehicles are heavier and then, you know, cause more damage. And on the continent, way stations, you know, address that issue. So all of our, at the ports, we have way stations and we have um, inspections. It's, it's required by federal law that we inspect um, all of our, our motor carriers out there. So our commercial motor carriers are inspected by the DOT, um, not only at the ports, but at uh, locations throughout the, the islands as well. So we have uh, rolling way stations in different areas to make sure we can enforce throughout. Okay, and then the fix it, the fix it ticket approach versus <clears throat> ours. I don't understand how that, that's easier because uh, for in our approach, we take care of those, we make sure that the, the officer's jobs are easier by ensuring that there's an inspection program that normalizes what a vehicle should look like. So when an officer sees that, that safety check, they know that it went through a, a normalized process to ensure that these, um, these standard sets of equipment are, are not faulty. Do you believe that Thank you, Chair. the safety checks actually 
make sure the car is enough. I just went in the other day, it was four minutes. All I did was my lights, check the tint, the tires, put on the thing. And look, the ball joints, nothing. Yeah, so I believe it does It does do a good job. I, I mean, there's some there's some of those operators that we gotta make sure that we talk to. So if we see situations like that, we're hoping that the public can report them to us so we can start re, re-educating those, those operators. It's not just one safety check. This is how they operate, because they lose money. It's not worth their time. Yeah, I don't, you know this. We don't see that though. That's the thing. When we start working with our operators, that's not what we see by and large. But if there's areas that you see it, we'll, we'll love to address it with them. Other questions? All right, if not, thank you very thank much. You. Thank you, everybody. That is the last measure on our agenda, and we are all oh, about 40 minutes ahead of schedule. So, mahalo well, everybody for your efficiency. Um, so, what we're going to do is uh, recess for decision making. Recess. Good afternoon. We're reconvening the Committee on Transportation here in Senate Conference Room 224 for decision making on our 3 p.m. agenda. Up first is Senate Bill 1411 relating to the Drug and Alcohol Toxicology Testing Lab. Um, recommendation is going to be to move this measure ahead with amendments. Uh, we'd like to adopt DOH's amendments, which removes them as the expenditure agency uh, as the bill focuses on DOT instead. Any questions or comments? If not, Vice Chair, please take a vote. Chair's recommendation on SB 1411 is to pass with amendments. Uh, Chair Lee. Aye. The Vice Chair goes aye. Senator Alafanti. Aye. Senator Kiyoho Kaloli. Aye. And Senator Awa. Excused. Oh, sorry. Was that it? Oh, there he is. Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah, we're in the first one. First one. Yeah, me. Yep. Yeah. Uh, yes. I Mahalo. Uh, measure is adopted, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, we're good, we're good. Um, moving on to SB 1401, relating to the electric bicycle and electric moped rebate program. Um, I'll note that we just had a bill uh, on our prior agenda two days ago that we also incorporated the necessary change into, so this bill becomes duplicative, so we're gonna defer it. Moving on to SB 929, uh, relating to the Department of Transportation. Um, didn't have a chance to talk with the DOT about this, uh, but um, just want to defer it till 2, 7, 3 p.m. so we have an opportunity to have a conversation. So that's uh, 2, 7 at the end of our 3 p.m. agenda. Oh, you must, you must state the room number. Oh, yes, and uh, thank you. Conference room 224 here at the State Capitol. <clears throat> Up next is SB 1087 relating to transportation. Um, I'll just note for folks, um, SB 1087 and SB 1086 largely deal with the same substantive uh, intent, so uh, we're going to defer SB 1087. Moving on to SB 1086 relating to transportation. Um, this is the other one. Uh, so the recommendation will be to pass this with amendments, um, incorporating the uh, members and responsibilities as outlined in SB 1087. Um, however, we do want to make a note that we'd like to uh, acknowledge the existing Highway Safety Council working group and membership, um, make sure we have some continuity there and retain those folks in their um, respective slots. Um, so uh, we'll make those amendments to the measure any comments or questions on that? Oh, and we'll adjust the preamble accordingly. Any questions or comments? If not, Vice Chair. Okay. With five members present, Chair's recommendation on SB 1086 is to pass with amendments. Five members present. All those in favor, uh, all those voting with reservations. Any no votes? Measure is adopted, Mr. Chair. All right, thank you. Moving on to SB 1410 relating to truck beds. Um, the recommendation is to move this ahead with amendments. Uh, we'd like to add in um, a defective date to this measure as it goes forward. Okay, what bill was that? Uh, SB 1410. Yeah. Right. Uh, any questions or comments? If not, 
Vice Chair. With amendment, sir? Yes. Okay. With five members present, any voting uh, with reservations on SB 1410? Any no votes? No. Okay. Measure is adopted, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you. Moving on to SB uh, 1506 relating to transportation, uh, we'd like to move this on with amendments as well. Uh, so we'd like to <clears throat> add members to the working group uh, from each county transportation department. Uh, also adopting, um, and at the same time, there'll no longer be a need for the uh, Metropolitan Planning Organization members, so we'll remove them as that would be duplicative. And then also um, per the Council on Development of Disabilities um, recommendations, we'd like to add somebody representing uh, in that constituency. And then um, for the uh, HCAN testimony, um, also add in someone speaking to the needs of young children. Uh, and then, uh, as we had discussed in testimony, we'd like to fold in the Safe Routes to Schools uh, program. So we have one unified, very simple uh, funding stream for these projects uh, and make the associated changes necessary to make that functional. Um, also, um, uh, use that special fund. So we'll remove the establishment of a new special fund and modify the existing Safe Routes special fund. Finally, we'll remove part two of the bill, which deals with the long-term funding, permanent funding switches. So this will be a, a, a singular infusion of funding and per DOT's testimony, add in a, a amount of $50 million. Um, and then we'll adjust the preamble accordingly. Any questions or comments on this? If not, Vice Chair. The Chair's recommendation on SB 1506 is to pass with amendments with five members present, anyone voting with reservations, any no votes. Measure is adopted, Mr. Chair. Thank you. And moving on to SB 1173, relating to vehicles. Um, I want to just pass this as is. Any questions and comments? If not, Vice Chair. Okay. Chair's recommendation is to pass SB 1173, uh, pass unamended. Any voting with reservations? Any no votes? Measure is adopted, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Uh, moving into SB 1403 relating to motor carrier vehicle inspections, uh, as this bill appears to be no longer needed, I'd like to defer this measure. <clears throat> and then for um, Senate bills 493 and 1430, with, which both deal with uh, motor vehicle safety inspections, um, most of all, I want to uh, mahalo the introducers of the measure for bringing this issue forward as it's um, quite timely. Um, so uh, it sounds like there's a lot of conflicting issues here. So what we want to do is, um, for SB 493, we want to defer this till uh, 2-7 on our, at the end of our 3 p.m. agenda um, to see if there's some sort of middle ground here, uh, particularly with the new vehicles and um, so forth um, going forward. Uh, so that would be coming back uh, 2, 7, 3 p.m. here in Conference Room 224, SB 1430, um, as it deals with full repeal. Again, one of the holiday introducer for um, starting this. You know, two years ago, I just want to say we um, repealed the vehicle uh, reconstruction requirements and those inspections. And part of that discussion was that that was okay because we still had safety inspections to begin with. So um, didn't want to go so far as to repeal everything completely but they want to have that conversation. Um, and we're gonna have the other bill to uh, sort of see what we can figure out. And if folks want to hop in, we'd love to um, chat with DOT about what to do going forward. So we'll defer that bill uh, for now. So questions or comments on the rest of this? Good job. If Thank not, you. all right, that is the end of our agenda. Mahalo everybody, we're adjourned.